Hi guys, good morning. Good morning to all and welcome you all in this AZ305 certification training. Uh, so we'll start in five minutes. We'll wait for like five minutes as the participants are still getting in. So I hope you'll wait for like more five minutes and we'll go ahead with the session. Thank you.
Hi guys, good morning. Good morning to all. So we'll start with the AZ305 certification training. So this is the one day training on certification AZ305. Uh, myself, Shaitali, your host for this training. So before starting up, we'll have a small introduction about our today's event sponsor, Synergetics. So Synergetics is India's one of a kind corporate learning solution company. Uh, we are not only restricted with the group trainings, but we also provide certification training. Uh, which will be help you all in to success in this competitive world. Here are some of the master solution. As you can see on the screen, we have onboarding solution. Reskilling solution. Then we have certification solution. So AZ305 comes under certification solution. Then we have certification plus add on solution. Cloud adoption solution. Architecting solution. Practice playbook solution. Let test technology training solution. And emerging technology training solution. Then today's uh, session is organized by ATC community, that is Azure Tech community, and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. So our ATC community is open to all who are interested in cloud technologies. So you just need to install the Meetup app on your phone to follow our community. So we have emerging technology community for all. Then we have emerging technology community Surat. Then we have Azure Tech community Pune for Pune Kurs. Then we have Azure Tech community Nagpur for Nagpur Kurs. So you just need to install the Meetup app on your phone or on your device to follow our communities. So I will share the link for all this community in the chat box. So you can just go and follow these communities to get the relevant and upcoming updates regarding the webinars and workshop we do. Then we have small code of conduct. Uh, please note, uh, no one is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording while the speaker is presenting his screen. So we'll upload this recording on our official YouTube channel. For that, you have to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So you will get the YouTube channel link in the chat box. So go and subscribe to our YouTube channel and you will get the access for the recording. Then today's speaker for the session is Mr. Sonu Satyadas. So he is an MCT Microsoft certified trainer and currently working as a practice head at Synergetics. Then you can see the agenda for this session. So we'll, you will get the overview of 305. Then we have exam voucher at discounted rate. As you all know, uh, the actual price of the exam voucher is 4,800. But we are providing it to you all at discounted rate that is for 3200. So if you are interested to get it from us, you can just connect us. I will share the details in the chat box later on for you all. Also note, once you purchase the exam voucher from us, you will get certified as well. So you'll get this uh, title as a Microsoft certified. These are the batches. If you get certified in particular course, you will get title as Microsoft Certified Export, Microsoft Certified Associate, and Microsoft Certified Fundamental. Then we are providing free learning achievement batch for AZ305. As you all know, you can just redeem this badge and get reflect. You can put it on your LinkedIn profile as well. 
you can get reflected the batch on your learn profile so you just have to follow uh, these steps and you just have to get it redeemed so i will share these steps as well as the url to redeem the learning achievement batch in the chat box so you just have to follow and get it activated as you all know synergetics provide certification training so you get, you all can grow professionally with us uh, we provide advanced training if anyone interested in getting certified in any of the certifications we have learning plan with less investment uh, as you can see we have basic plan as well as basic plus plans with the investment mentioned so if you need any further details on it you you can contact us i will share the details in the chat box then we have upcoming certification training on pl 900 it will be one day free training on 25th of march timings are mentioned 10 am to 4 pm so i will share the registration link for it as well in the chat box so you can just go and register yourself then do follow us on our social media platforms like linkedin youtube Facebook and Twitter to get the relevant updates on the webinar workshop we do. Also, it's a humble request to each and every participant to make sure you submit your feedback form by the end of the session. We'll share the feedback form link in the chat box, which you have to fill. That's all from my side. Now over to you, Sonu, sir. Yeah, thank you, Chaitali. Hello everyone, I'm myself Sonu. Hope I am audible, uh, audible to all of you. Uh, today we are uh, discussing about the Microsoft uh, Azure uh, Architecting Solution Certification that is uh, AZ305. Hope you are able to see the screen. So a couple of points about this certification. This is an expert level certification. That is a solutions architect certification. The certification title is uh, designing Microsoft Azure infrastructure solutions. Once you complete this certification, you will be getting the Azure Solution Architect Expert Certification. You will also get the certification badge that you can uh, uh, use in your profiles. So this course, as I have mentioned, is an expert level certification. So it is recommended to complete the fundamental certifications and the associate level certifications if you want. The AZ900, which is the fundamentals level certification and the uh, administrator associate certification that is AZ104 is uh, more about administering the Azure services uh, mostly on the infrastructure solutions, container solutions, storage solutions, identity and networking. So once you are familiar with these uh, services or if you have completed the uh, associate level certification, you can easily achieve this expert level certification. But it is not mandatory that you have to complete the other two certifications to take this expert level certification. If you want, you can directly uh, apply for this expert level certification and complete it. But the recommended path of uh, achievement is 
completing the fundamentals level certification, then associate level certification, and then going to the expert level certification. In this certification, we will have uh, 11 modules. All modules are talking about various Azure services and how we can design a solution uh, using this cloud services, primarily about the governing services, governance and compliance uh, solu uh, services for our solutions, then compute solutions like uh, virtual machines, uh, container solutions, uh, web app solutions. So how we can use these services to uh, create a deployment solution for our applications. And then we have non-relational storage solutions as the next module. There we will be talking about primarily the unstructured uh, uh, data or semi-structured data. And in the story, relational storage solutions, we will be talking about the uh, relational database services. Data integration is the next module where we'll talk about different integration services like a uh, service bus, event grid, and event hub, and so on. And uh, then we'll go to the application architecture solution, following with the authentication and authorization with identities and monitoring and logging, and then networking solutions. And uh, finally, we will uh, finish this session with the business continuity and disaster recovery solutions and some of the migration services. So these are the 11 modules you have to complete for this uh, AZ305 certification. So if you see these 11 modules comes under different uh, areas and you will be getting the questions on these areas or from these areas in different weightages as you can see uh, the identity governance and monitoring solutions around 25 to 30 percentage of the uh, total questions means the weightage is given 25 to 30 which means the more weightage means more questions can come from that area and uh, data storage solutions again 25 to 30 percentage business continuity solutions 10 to 15 and uh, this in designing the infrastructure solutions are in uh, 25 to 30 percentage uh, weightage is given so if you see more weightage means you will be getting more questions from that area in today's session we will be discussing uh, some of the modules because it's not possible for us to cover all the 11 modules in one day. So if you are going for the complete certification course, that is an instructor led uh, training course, it will be a four days of certification. And in this four days, in the day one, you will be uh, covering the governance and computes modules. And uh, day two, We'll be talking about the non relational storage and relational storage solutions with the data integration. Day three, we'll be talking about the application architecture, authentication, authorization, and monitoring. And final day, you'll be discussing about the networking, business continuity, and disaster recovery, and the migration solutions. So for some of the modules, we have case study uh, associated with that. So 
instead of labs you will be doing or you will be uh, discussing about the case study so how the solutions can be designed using this services so as i have mentioned we will be picking some of the core modules for this session because in this uh, short period of time we will not be able to cover all the modules but we can discuss some of the modules and i can give you an overview about these certification final uh, finally means at the end of the day i will show you how we can register for this exam and how or what kind of questions will come and some of the sample questions also i can show you as part of this uh, session so primarily we are starting with our first module which is the base for all the other modules so if you are planning to go for the uh, azure solution or Art, uh, architect certification the first module is about the governance solution so there are different azure services comes under this governance and compliance uh, category and we will be discussing some of them here primarily about the uh, management groups subscriptions uh, resource groups tagging service and uh, azure policy and rbac and the blueprints the governance is very important when you design a solution for your organization because the organizations may need to follow some rules or guidelines while designing the solutions so how we can achieve these uh, standards and compliance while creating the azure services what are the different services helps us to achieve this in this module we will be discussing about some of them the first one is about the management group and following with the subscriptions resource groups and then resources so as a azure service user or azure cloud user if you want to create services in the azure platform you have to have a valid azure subscription because an azure subscription tells what kind of services you can use and how microsoft is charging you for consuming these services but in a large organizations we may have multiple subscriptions maybe one subscription we use for building the dev and test solutions another subscription we may use for production workloads that also sometimes we use different subscriptions for different uh, deployments or different uh, clients different uh, departments in such cases if we want to organize our subscriptions we can use the management groups for example if you are using multiple subscriptions inside your azure account you will be creating different 
Azure services like VMs, databases, storage services, networking services, and so on. But at the end of the day, if you want to identify the cost related to a particular project or a particular subscription, or you need to apply some policies and conditions for a group of subscriptions, we need to logically organize these subscriptions. For example, if the organization has multiple dev and test subscriptions, we want to apply some policies, means some kind of restrictions to uh, ensure that the rules and guidelines are followed by the Azure users. So how you can apply these policies for a group of subscriptions? For that, we need to create the management group. So by default, there is a management group, which is the root, tenant root group is available, which is the default management group. But it is possible that you can create uh, different uh, management groups under the root group and put your subscriptions inside that group. You can apply the policies and restrictions in this management group level, which is applicable to all the subscriptions, which is part of that management group. And each subscription defines how the Azure user is going to create the solutions or create the services, how the billing is happening, what are the different services allowed for them to create? That is defining or that is defined by the subscription. So you can say simply it is the billing boundary for your uh, Azure services. Inside each subscription, you can create multiple resources. A resource may be a VM or network, database, storage account, or web apps, or anything. But if you want to logically organize them, you can use the resource groups, which is part of the ARM model. So a resource group is going to logically group the resources. Logically grouping means the resources can be in different regions, but they can be logically organized or logically grouped using this resource groups. Management group, as I have mentioned, there is a root management group under which you can create different uh, subgroups. And each management group can contain multiple subscriptions inside. As you can see in the picture, the Tailwinds is one management group that comes under the root group. And based on the department, there are multiple management groups created, like a sales, corporate, and IT. And under each management group, you can have different uh, subscri subscriptions. And any policies that you apply to these management groups are applicable to the subscriptions that comes under this group. Subscriptions means <clears throat> the billing boundary for your Azure services. So you have to have a valid subscription. It may be an enterprise subscription or a pay as you go subscription or a free subscription. You must have a valid subscription to create and use the Azure services. And different subscriptions will have different billing period, 
as well as the cost for the resources. You can put these subscriptions inside this management groups and apply some policies and role assignments for allowing or denying the access to the resources. Typically, organizations organize these subscriptions under the management group, either based on the department level, means department wise, or maybe the environment wise, like a dev environment, test environment, or production environment. Or sometimes they will be organized or grouped under the management groups based on the clients. Suppose if I have a client one and uh, for them we have multiple subscriptions. So those client one subscriptions can come into a single management group. As you can see, there are different uh, subscriptions that can come inside the management groups. So the benefit of using the management group is you can identify the cost, you can apply the policies and conditions, enforce the role assignments on the management group level. So you will be able to manage your subscriptions and the resources by putting these subscriptions into different uh, management groups. Now, if you talk about the resource groups, it's a logical container, you can say. A resource group is a logical container that can hold multiple resources, which may be a virtual machine or a network service or a database or app service or some identity solutions, anything. So any resources that you create that can go inside a resource group. Within one subscription, you can create any number of resource groups and each resource group can contain multiple resources inside it. Some of the organizations create the resource groups based on the deployments. For example, if I have an application which contains or which uh, requires multiple services, like uh, maybe we have a database, we have a network, we have a virtual machine, we have a storage solution, all these part of a single uh, solution or single project. We can create a resource group for that particular project may be a project one group and all the related resources I can put inside that. But some organizations may create resource groups based on the type of the resources. For example, for all the databases, we can create one group, all the VMs, another group, all the networks, another group like that. It is completely up to you how you are going to create and organize your resources within these resource groups. You can group the resources based on the type, application, department, location, or building. You can apply the role based access on the resource group level. For example, if you are the owner of the account, you have the full permission to create and manage these resources. But 
for another user you want to delegate the access or you want to provide the access to the resource group and resources but you don't want to provide a owner permission instead you want to provide only limited permissions like a reader permission or maybe a contributor permission or you want to provide the permissions only to work with the specific resources like a virtual machine contributor which means he will get the permissions only to work with the virtual machine the resource tagging is also a feature that is available in arm that is azure resource manager model as as we have discussed you can create different resources within a single subscription and these subscriptions can be grouped or put inside a management group but sometimes we want to uh, logically group the resources based on some custom attributes for example i have a database suppose here inside the hr department i have a database for legal department i have another sql database and for app 2 subscription i have another database and here we have another database yes it is possible to go and get the total cost of all my sql databases you can go to the billing section and then show the total amount based on the type of resource for example yes if you select the filter as resource type equal to sql server it is going to show the total of total cost of this database this database this database and this database or you may go and uh, create multiple databases inside one subscription itself okay so you suppose if you are creating multiple databases within this here but if you say i want to see the total cost on this subscription so it will sh show the total resources cost but if i filter based on the type i can say type is equal to sql database it will show the total cost of these three but i know that this one that is the database number 1 is used for dev and test purpose and uh, the database 2 this one and the database 3 is used for production so how i can identify the cost for my uh, sql database that is used for production which means the total cost for the 2 and 3 databases not for the 1 so if i go to the billing section of this particular subscription it will show the total cost of sql server databases so means if i filter by the type so type is equal to sql server you will be getting the total of all the three but what if i want to get the total of production databases so such cases you can apply the tag for this database so whenever you create the first database you can apply a tag so a tag is something like a key value pair so you can apply something like a maybe environment environment equal to you can say dev but 
for these two databases, whenever you create, you can specify the environment equal to production. So in this case, even though we have three databases within the same subscription and all of them are SQL server types, we can go and filter based on the tag like a show me the total cost of databases where the environment tag value is given as production. So it will show the total of these two databases only. Okay, so this is one benefit of using the tagging. So if whenever you want to uh, filter the resources based on some key and values, you can use this tags. So tags you can apply on the resource level or resource group level. Okay, so you can apply the tags for the resource groups or you can apply them to the individual resources. Policy and RBAC. What is this Azure policy and what is the importance of using this policy and how it helps you to uh, ensure that the resources are created based on the rules and regulations uh, that need to be followed by the organization. Means how we can use it for the governance purpose and how RBAC is different from policy. So you can see a policy is a set of restrictions that you can apply to the resources or a group of resources or a type of resource or to the subscription level. So you want to apply some conditions while creating the resources. For example, as a valid Azure user, you are allowed to create the resources in any Azure region. Means if you are a public Azure user, you are allowed to create your resources in East US, West US, uh, uh, UK regions, sorry, Asia regions, and everywhere. But according to your organization's uh, standards and compliance, you are not allowed to create the resources outside your region. Maybe if you are in India, according to the standards and compliance, you are not allowed to create the resources outside India, which means you have to create the resources either in Central India, West India, or South India only. But how we can restrict the users from creating the resources in other locations? Suppose while creating the resource, how we will make sure that this resource is creating only in the India region, we can use a policy for that. So when you create a policy and apply it to the subscription level, or you can apply that in the resource group level, or you can apply that in the management group level. So you can apply this policy Inside the policy, you will be writing a condition. If the selected resource group, sorry, selected region is not India regions, means any one of the India region, Central India, West India, or South India, the resource creation needs to be failed, which means it does not allow you to create the resources. 
so that means whenever the user is going to create a resource it always validate the condition whether the resource is created in india region or outside if it is outside then the resource creation will fail and we have also uh, identified tagging process the tagging is one of the easiest and best practice for filtering the resources for uh, billing and other purposes so we have to make sure whenever a resource is created it may be a vm database or anything the tag value must be applied for example environment tag environment is equal to production environment is equal to a uh, dev or environment is equal to qa so some of the environment value is mandatory as a tag for every resource so how we will make sure that the tag value is created for the resources you can enforce a policy you can create a policy and apply that policy to uh, your subscription or resource group so that anything that you create within that subscription or resource group will make sure that the tag is applied like this there are hundreds of conditions or hundreds of policies available like uh, whenever you create a virtual machine we have to enable the backup service so backup service is not enabled for virtual machines by default so we have to ensure that whenever we create a, a virtual machine backup service needs to be enabled so you can apply a policy so that any user is trying to create a virtual machine without enabling the backup service it will fail the resource creation or it will audit that and say that this resource is not compliant compliant means it is not satisfying the uh, governance policies so these policies we can uh, get from the azure policy means azure policies dashboard means in policies dashboard there are hundreds of built in policies available but if you want you can also create custom policies suppose if you are looking for a uh, policy condition which is not available yes you can go and create a custom policy and then apply it to the resources but sometimes if you want to apply multiple policies to a resource group or a subscription you can go for initiative definitions so policy definitions means a single policy that can be applied to a resource group or subscription but if you want to group multiple policies and apply them together then we can go for the initiative definitions and some of the policy examples you can see like uh, allow only the certain virtual machine sizes for the project means if you have a budget constraint so that larger virtual machine creation is not allowed such cases we can put a policy condition that if the user is trying to create a virtual machine only some selected skews are allowed selected skews means selected vm types are allowed if some other type is selected it will not allow you to create the resource or you can apply something different like uh, ensure all resources are correctly tagged 
so if the resource don't have a tag then it, it needs to be audited and uh, apply the tag you can recommend system updates on your servers means based on some conditions you can apply the updates for your system and you can also make sure that any user who is connecting to this subscription must log in through the multi-factor authentication so if they have not used the multi-factor authentication then it needs to be uh, audited so that you can enforce by using this policies see uh, you can apply the policies in the uh, highest scope as possible means like a management group or resource group or subscription levels so you need to make sure when this policies are getting evaluated so during the creation of resource or after the creation of resource so you have to make sure when this policies are getting evaluated what if a resource is non compliant what to do do we need to drop or cancel the creation of that resource or continue the creation of resource but audit it means add this non compliant resource into the report so what action need to be taken while creating the resource whether allow the creation with warnings or just uh, cancel the creation of resource consider when to automatically remediate non compliant resources means when and how these non compliant resources need to be remediated means any non compliant resource already exist how we can go and handle them use this azure policy compliance dashboard for auditing and review in the policy dashboard you will be able to see what are the different uh, non compliant resources effectively combine the policy with rbac so rbac is another service or another feature available in azure for uh governance and compliance so you can combine the rbac with azure policy to build a, a good solution what is this rbac that is role based access control see as a uh architect you may be designing the solutions but there are administrators who creates this resources when an administrator creates a resource he will be getting the owner permission by default because he is the one who is creating the resource so if you see so here you can see the owner permission is applicable to the admins usually for the admin users we assign the owner permission so that they can create or they will be the owner of this management group or the owner of the subscription or owner of this resource group or owner of this resources individual resources like a vms databases or network but if there are some external user for example uh, in your organization you have to connect with some external users he may be an external auditor or reviewer or maybe a 
थर्ड पार्टी कंपनी क्लाइंट और क्लाइंट कंपनीज थर्ड पार्टी कंपनीज एम्प्लॉय तो यू वॉन्ट टू गिव हिम द एक्सेस टू यूर सब्सक्रिप्शन और रिसोर्स बट यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू अलो देम टू मॉडिफाई एनीथिंग सच केसेस फॉर सच यूजर्स यू कैन गिव अ रीडर परमिशन सो रीडर इज अनदर रोल यू कैन असाइन विच मीन्स यू विल बी गिविंग a reader permission for a user which means they are not allowed to create anything they can just view the resources configurations they cannot modify anything but in some cases we we have to provide access to other users he may be an internal user or an external user we want to provide them access to create and manage the resources but we don't want to give them the permission for sharing the access with others yes i want to give the permission to you the full permission i want to give you but i don't want to allow them to share the permission with others means delegating the permission with others is not allowed such cases we can go for the contributor permission so here contributor is another role which gives the full permission except this delegation which means if i have added you as a contributor in my subscription yes you can create anything in my subscription but you cannot go and share this permission or cannot go and grant permissions to other users it is also possible to assign some resource specific roles resource specific roles means yes i have a user who wants to work only in the virtual machines he because he is comfortable to create and configure the virtual machine but the network modification or maybe the uh, web app modification is not allowed so in such cases we can provide a virtual machine contributor or virtual machine reader permission which means we are giving the reader or contributor permission only for what type of resources the uh, virtual machine services so the user will get the permission only for creating and modifying the virtual machine because he is getting a virtual machine contributor permission but if these roles like a uh, we have discussed about the owner role which means full permission including the delegation of access we have a reader permission which means only read access allowed no modification we have contributor role which is providing access to resources and he can modify the resources but no delegation of access allowed means he cannot assign the roles and permissions to other users but if these and also we have discussed about the resource specific roles like a virtual machine contributor okay so if these roles are not satisfying your requirement you are allowed to create custom roles you can create your own role definitions okay so mostly help desk professional developers and the users who are managing the resources will get the uh resource specific custom or contributor permissions so now how we can combine this policies with rbap because i said policies are typically used for applying some conditions like a resource creation allowed or not 
allowed means resource creation allowed in this region or not or this type of vm allowed or not or the tagging is enabled or not so if not what to do and if yes what to do so that checking whether that particular condition is satisfied or not that is used by policy but rbac is used for checking whether they have the sufficient permission to do that operation for example if an admin is trying to deploy a resource so the admin is going to deploy a resource first his rbac permissions will be verified which means the arm will checks whether the user has the permission to do the create operation the policy is not evaluated first rbac that means whether this user has sufficient the permission to create this resource if the resource creation permission is not there then this is simply fail the resource creation as you can see the resource creation is fail but yes if the user has sufficient role permissions to create then it goes to the next evaluation that is as per the policy configured in your subscription is it allowed to create the resource or deny so here whenever the policy is evaluated it will identify whether the resource can be created or not if the resource can be created then it will create that resource but if no which means the resource will be the resource creation will be failed so before moving into the blue prints let me show you some of the things which i have discussed here is the portal i can log in to the portal using the url portal.azure.com inside this you will be able to see different subscriptions so some of the subscriptions are disabled okay but here i have one active subscription now i am allowed to create the resources inside this active subscription if you go to the management group a management group is a way to organize the resource organize your subscriptions as you can see we have multiple subscriptions yes some of them are not active but i can put my subscriptions into different uh, management groups here this is the root management group that is tenant root group and these two subscriptions are created inside this root management group and there is msdn platforms which is another azure subscription that is created inside the mct resources management group and there is another management group called a training group okay which means inside the tenant group i have two sub groups mct resources and a uh, training group suppose if this subscription if i want to move to the training group here i can say move to training group here you can see now 
the subscription goes inside the training group. So I can move this also into the training group. See, inside this root, I have two subgroups. Once, one is my MCT resources management group. There I have my MCT subscription. And here I have another management group, training group. Inside it, I can put my other subscriptions. So this way you can organize your subscription. So you can see the Azure Pass sponsorship subscriptions comes inside the training group. If you want to create another management group that you can use or that you can create using this create section. So here we have the create and you'll, you are allowed to go and create a new management group by clicking on the create. Now, moving back to the resource groups. Inside my active subscription, I have created multiple resource group. You can see I have different subscriptions and each subscription have different resources. You can see some of the some of the resource groups are created in MSDN platform subscription and some other some other resource groups are created inside the Azure Pass sponsorships and they are in different different uh, locations. And if you see there is one resource group which is called a NetStar group. So this is a project which I am doing currently. So this project contains different Azure services like uh, it contains the key vault, the app configuration, service bus, Cosmos DB database, storage account, etc. So if I want to group all these resources, which is part of a same project, I can use a resource group here you can see i have organized all the resources which is part of this netstar project so netstar is the project name so as part of the netstar project i have multiple resources so these resources i'm putting inside this uh, resource group netstar group resource group And if you go to this overview page of this resource group, you will be able to see the option for adding the tags. So currently there are no tags attached to this resource group. But if I want to add a tag, tagging will help you to logically group based on that key value. So if I click on this, I can add some key and value here. For example, I have created this resource group. So first I'll say who is the owner of this group. So maybe my subscription is used by multiple users, but who is the owner of this group? Then that I can provide here. So I'm giving my name. And what is the purpose of doing this? So I can say environment. So this I have created for my production services. So I can say environment is equal to production. So when I give save, we can see here we have two tags added that is owner and the environment, which is uh, which are the two key value pairs that I have. Similarly, while creating these resources, for example, if I go inside my Cosmos DB,
so for this resources also while creating you will be able to apply the uh, tags so whenever you create a resource you will be allowed to specify the tags so you may the properties here tag separate section itself is there so you can see the for the cosmos db tags are coming as a separate tab itself so if you go here you can go and specify your tags here. So here, maybe I can say environment equal to production, or maybe owner is equal to. So these are some of the values I have already given. So you can provide these informations. So there is a default uh, tag added that is default experience is core SQL. So that is the default tag and I have added two extra tags. So if you want, you can add a, another one. So maybe Cosmos DB API. So this API is SQL API. Because if I have multiple Cosmos DB accounts, maybe some of them are using uh, SQL API, some of them are using MongoDB API, and some of them are using uh, some other so then I can provide what type of API it is using by using this Mr. please I think that it's not there is some error in saving this tags Okay, I think it is saved. What happened? It's not saved. There is some problem in saving that tag, or maybe it may be internally saved. I think it's not coming here. Okay, so anyway, I have added two extra tags here. One you can see environment, another one is owner. Similarly, for the other services, like if I go to my resource group and uh, select their storage account. For the storage account, you can see the tag section coming here. For every resource, you can add a, this environment. I can say production owner. So I can add the tags to these resources. Here you can see. There are two tags added. Now, if I want to see the total cost, so the tags are just now applied. So there is no billing details you will get. Suppose if you go to your billing section. So since this is the Azure Pass sponsorship, you may not get the bill details. But if you want to filter the uh, cost based on the tags, you can go to the cost analysis section and you will get an option for choosing or doing the filtering based on the tags. So currently that is not because this is Azure Pass sponsorship will not give you the option for uh, uh, what to say 
showing the bell because it's a free subscription. Uh, let me check the other one, but this is disabled one. So here, this is my MCT subscription, but it's actually a disabled one, okay. But still, you will be able to apply the filter. Here, you can see the total cost here. Actual cost is 8511, okay. And if you apply this filter, and I want to see uh, the cost of the resources based on the resource type. Maybe I, I want to see the resources, which is of type uh, SQL Server. So I can go and search for the resource type SQL Server and then choose that only. So it will show the cost of only that particular resource. So here if you go I think this is for virtual machines. See if I select here you can see it is going to show the total cost of virtual machines only. Here you can see this is the cost of virtual machines, only 87 rupees. But if I go and uh, filter based on tag, then I can select a tag. Here I can say, maybe I want to see all the production environment resources cost. So I can select here. So the new tags are not applied here. I think there is nothing like environment here. Okay, maybe a department I can search or maybe owner. Because I have applied the environment for the other subscription, not for the MSDN subscription. So if I'm selecting this, so he, here it is going to show the total cost of all resources whose tag is equal to <coughs> that is owner equal to Sonu means for which of the resources the tag is owner equal to Sonu for those resources cost is showing here you can see 12 rupees I think it is for a storage account here it is for the storage account and this is the bandwidth And if you want, you can apply another filter, another tag also. So maybe I can say display, sorry, department admin. I'm just giving. So here it will show the total cost of resources filtering by the tag is equal to owner, that is, owner value is Sonu, and department equal to admin. It shows the total cost of that. Okay. So it is possible for you to filter and uh, view that cost of resources. They may be in different resource groups. These resources may be in different uh, resource groups, but you will be able to logically group and uh, get the total bill of that resources. But resource group wise, if you want to see, you can take here a resource group name. Suppose I want to know what is the total cost for a particular resource group. Suppose there is an AZ204 group or maybe AZ104 group. So what is the total cost for the resources that I created inside this? More than 5000 rupees resources I have created inside uh, this particular resource group. Then later we have discussed about the policies. So if I search for policy, here you will be able to see the policy option. Here you can see the policy dashboard it is shows the status of <coughs> resources which are compliant and which are non compliant you can here you can see some of the resources are non compliant I, you can see 
zero out of six. Okay, non-comply. And some of these, this is one custom initiative or custom policy applied. That is this one. If you want to apply some policies, you can either apply individual policies or a group of policies. If you go to the authoring section and definitions, you will be able to see the policy definitions and the initiative definition. Here you can see there are two initiative definitions which are custom type, which means here you can see the type as custom, which means these are custom policy groups I have created. So here you can see my sample policy group contains three policies inside it. And my test initiative contains one policy inside it. And these are individual policies. Here you can see the type as policy, which means these are individual policies and they are built in policies. Okay, so wherever the custom coming it means the user has created it built in means microsoft is providing these policies and the definition type initiative means it's a group of policies and policy means it's a single policy so here you can see these are custom but if you scroll down you can see the defin initiative definition which is provided by microsoft and here you can see this is an initiative definition, which means a group of policy. And it contains 255 policies inside it. So let us understand how to create a custom policy. So I'm just removing this existing. I think this is already assigned to some. Yeah, this is already assigned. I'll show you a very simple one where I'm going to create an initiative definition, which means a group of policies. And I'm not going to create a custom policy. There are some policies provided by Azure. I'm going to use some of them. So I'm going to add a new policy definition here. So here you can see what should be the, or where I want to save this, uh, initiative definition so here i can store that in the tenant group or mct means this is these are the two groups uh, like uh, management groups so my subscription is inside this so either i can store it in a root management group or inside a specific management group or optionally i can select a subscription so inside this group i have two subscriptions and inside this, I have one subscription. So I want to apply in this training group management group level. So what is the benefit of storing the policy in the management group level? So that this policy is applicable to both the subscriptions as we have seen in this picture. If I'm applying a policy in this, corporate management group level, it is applicable to these two subscriptions. Okay, so that's a benefit. So if you store the policies in the management group level, it can be applied to the subscriptions that comes inside that. So I'm storing in this level, select. It is inside the training group, management group level. Name, I can say my custom policy, not policy, it's an initiative definition. 
description if you want you can provide category i can choose an existing category if you want okay i'm using it for uh, what management maybe compute management so i'm putting in the compute and version is 1.0 next which of the policies comes inside this group so i said initiative definition is a group of policies so which of the policies you want to add you can search and add them so i want to apply something like a location policy yeah here allowed location so which of the locations are allowed okay that i am selecting now let me add another policy virtual machines when i create virtual machines queue must be okay allowed virtual machines queue so when i create virtual machines uh, i have to put a condition that large type of vms not allowed okay uh, general purpose low low configuration vms only allowed so i have to allow only specific type of vms so that condition i want to apply or i can add another one whenever we create a vm uh, backup must be configured so virtual machines here azure backup must be enabled for the vms so here you can see there are three conditions one is only selected locations are allowed second is only selected vm types are allowed third one whenever i create a vm the backup must be configured next then i have to i don't want to put any custom groups initiative parameters not there policy parameters means i have three policies and uh, two policies you have to configure some parameters like a uh, uh, enable backup for the vms does not require any parameter it is just a true or false condition like policy uh, sorry backup allowed or sorry backup is created or not created or backup is enabled or not enabled so there is no uh, need to go and select an option but for allowed location we have to say which of the locations are allowed so that value i want to set here so which of the locations i can say central india or maybe i can simply select india so here i can say south india and west india so i have selected three locations you can see central india west india and south india only allowed now virtual machines queue so which of the vm types are allowed so i am saying uh, maybe all the basic types i want to select then standard types so 16 cpu cores i don't want to allow only maybe maximum up to 8 core or maybe four core only allowed so this i don't want a3 if i okay, d d series is not allowed so i am selecting 18 cpu types so only these types are allowed so let me create that initiative definition which means i have created one policy group or policy configuration now we have to assign this i want to assign this policy definition to 
a particular resource group or you want to sorry you want to apply this to a particular resource group or a subscription or management group level you can see the scope scope is by default to the management group training group management group but i want to apply only to the first subscription so I, how i will identify which is that subscription okay this so this is what the subscription so if you want you can apply this condition to the subscription or to the management group or to a specific resource group suppose if i am selecting a specific resource group this conditions are only applicable to this resource group but if i am clearing and uh, choosing only this subscription which means inside this subscription any resource group you select it is applicable okay so what is the scope that you can select you can select management group level which means it is applicable for any subscriptions in that group or you can select a particular subscription which means it is applicable to all the resource groups in that subscription or you can choose a particular resource group so here i am selecting a particular resource group like a net star select and i don't want to give, to give any exclusions or anything just uh, so non compliant messages if you want ex explicit messages you can put i don't want to put any custom messages yes you can see the assignment is done which means if you go to the policy here you can see i have applied this uh, initiative definition means policy to the nestar group here so now it may takes couple of minutes to apply the policy so let us try to create a virtual machine or some other resource in some other region for example i am going to create a storage account I am going to select my resource group that is NetStar. You can see whenever the region is U East US, it is simply give the validation error saying that as per the policy, East US is not allowed. But if I go and select Central India, then it will be allowed. You can see Central India, that error is gone. Okay, so that means Central India is an allowed location. So now the policy is ensuring or it is enforcing uh, that the user is only selecting the allowed locations. If he is trying to choose any other location as per this policy, it will give in validation error. You can see it is giving a validation error. Similarly, if uh, we are trying to create a VM, we have selected some virtual machine types. So here I have selected my uh, what to say resource group, and the location should be Central India. Yes, I am selecting Central India only. But I'm going to select a VM type here. See all the sizes. Let me choose any size which is available. I think only these series. I think B2MS is allowed. Here you can see it is validating this policy items availability on policy assignment for selected scope so this policy is defined defining what type of uh, vm skews allowed so you can see whenever i select a vm size immediately it is validating with this policy okay because it is available or it is a valid skew 
it allow me to create the vm okay but if i am trying to create some other vm size uh, unfortunately it is not listing here or maybe i need to go and change the location maybe east us still only those look these series are only available so as per this policy only this selected skews only listing so you can see the policy is making sure that the vm is created only with this selected skews so this will make sure that you will create the resources as per the standards and guidelines uh, enforced by the administrator so for that we can use the policy similarly i can also configure the rbac rbac means inside my active directory i have different users as you can see there are different users some of these users are invited users okay you can see this user is a guest user this user is a guest user this is an external user he is also a guest user okay suppose i want to provide access to my resource group okay i want to give them the access here i can go and select this resource group and i want to provide access to those users but i don't want to give the full access i want to give only the reader permission so i can go to the role definitions and add a role assignment here i can select a role here you can see the reader which is giving only the read access to the resources or you can also provide the owner permissions or uh, some resource specific permissions okay. so here i am giving the reader permission to whom i can select i can assign the permission to a user group or service principal means i am giving the permission to an external user for example the name itself i have given as external user <coughs> this one this is what the user so i am giving access to this external user it see this on this resource group i am giving read access to this external user as i now whenever he logs into the azure portal he will be able to see this resource group but he cannot go and modify the resources if he is trying to delete or create anything inside this resource group it is not allowed because i have given the reader permission only but you can see myself the owner of this uh, resource group for this resource group i am the owner as you can see owner permission is assigned but for the other users i have given the reader permission here okay so this make sure that we are providing only limited access to other users he may be an employee in the same organization or may be an invited external user so we can control the access to the resources by using rbac and using policy we can make sure the resources are created based on the standards and guidelines enforced by the administrator so this is what we have discussed so far in the module and uh, there is blueprints also remaining let's uh, discuss what is blueprint and then we'll take a break a blueprint is uh, a way to deploy the resources with your arm templates 
inside a resource group with specific policy definitions and are back so usually when you deploy the resources we have to do everything manually for example we will create the resource group manually and then deploy the resources using the arm templates arm template means it's a json template that contains the resource definitions so we will deploy the resources using the arm template and then we can apply the rbac policies means sorry rbac conditions like uh, roles if you want to assign for the users or before deploying itself you will be able to apply the rbac and the policy definition so policy definition is for governance and compliance and rbac you will be providing for the access means authorization uh, conditions so you can create a resource group and then configure the rbac and policy manually and then deploy the resources using the arm templates but what if i want to configure everything means i have to create the resource group deploy the resources configure the policies and configure the uh, rbac everything in one go and this i have to repeat in multiple subscription because in my dev subscription or may, or maybe in my test subscription i am deploying some resources with some policies with some roles the same resources with the same policies with the same rbac permissions i want to do the deployment in the another subscription means i want to repeat the deployment without any changes with the same resources same rbac conditions same uh, policy definitions so if i want to repeat this uh, in another subscription in one go i don't want to do them manually one by one so if i want to do that together we can go for the blueprint so blueprint definition is a collection of arm templates which means resources definitions resource groups which means which resource group to be used rbac which means which role based access control to be used and the policy definitions what are the different policies to be applied so all the four you can put together using the blueprints so that is the first module in this module you have learned some of the governance services like a uh, management group subscriptions resource groups tagging services rbac policies and finally the blueprints now we can take a small break for 10 15 minutes and we will continue after this break now it's already 11:48 so we'll take a uh 10 12 minutes break so uh, 12 o'clock we can continue and if you have any questions you can post your questions in the chat we will be answering those questions so let's go for the break now
Hello. Yeah, welcome back everyone. We are now continuing with our next uh, topic. In this module, we are looking some of the compute solutions. So a compute solution. It is part of the uh, module, which means the, the area which is covering 25 to 30 percentage means more questions you can expect from this area I mean from this service groups. In this we are learning some of the compute services. A compute service means what is required to run an application or a service. You need a CPU, RAM, network configurations, storage configurations to deploy those applications and services, right? Primarily, the CPU and RAM uh, for the execution of the application and service. Which of the services are providing such environments where we can deploy our applications and services and run it. We have virtual machines, which is the core compute solution, which is an infrastructure as a service, means IaaS service, considered as the core compute solution. Along with we have App services, which is a pass service for deploying the web and uh, API applications. We have container instances, which is used for running serverless container containerized applications like a Docker container applications. We have Kubernetes services, which is used for deploying uh, containerized applications and services in a Kubernetes cluster. And we have serverless functions, which is used for executing some kind of background jobs based on the trigger initiated by user or the Azure services. Logic apps are another compute solutions which is used for executing some long running workflows. So if you have a, if you have to create and execute some workflows, then you can use the logic apps. So starting with the compute solutions, we have to decide which compute solution to use. So if you look for a lift and shift migrations, then we can either use the virtual machines or app services. Here you can see, so lift and shift or cloud optimized. If it is lift and shift, then we have to check whether it is containerized or non-containerized. If it is not, containerized, then we can use app service or virtual machine. So if if it is a uh, web or API applications which is developed in modern frameworks, then app service is the better option. But if it is a legacy application, then you can go for virtual machine. So first we have to take a decision whether we are looking for a lift and shift migration or the deployment of a cloud optimized application. If it is lift and shift, and if it is containerized, then we have some other solutions 
if it is not containerized then we have to check whether it is a it is an applic application that is developed in modern frameworks then you can go for the app service otherwise go for the virtual machine but if we are planning to do a lift and shift for our containerized applications then you have to go and check are you looking for a full fledged orchestration service which means are you looking for some orchestration service like a kubernetes then you can go for the aks but if you are not looking for any orchestration service then you can go for the app service container service means if you already have an app service created we have the azure app service for containers available but if you don't want to use app service and the orchestration then we can go for the other services like uh, you can go and check you need full fledged orchestration no then we can go for container instances then you can check even driven workload with a short lived process means if it is a triggered application then you can go for azure functions if it is needs dotnet integration or fully supported microsoft technology stack then you can go for the service fabric which is the microservices uh, cluster that support the containerized application deployment but it is completely uh, on the dotnet framework but if you are looking for uh, uh, microservices architecture with your containerized application then go for app service for high performance workload means if you have the means here you can see whenever you look for the uh, lift and shift or cloud optimized if it is containerized and or lift and shift will go for the app services and virtual machines but if it is not a migration but it is a cloud optimized or it is not a migration then we can go for the virtual machine scale set or azure batch or app services or functions okay so that means you are allowed to choose various services means if you are not looking for a pass service then you can go for the virtual machine scale set but if you are looking for a high performance workload then you can go for azure batch if you are deploying a microservices architecture application means it may be uh, a simple api application you can go for the azure app service if it is an event driven background job application then you can go for azure function okay. or if it is some orchestration means sorry if it is some containerized application without orchestration then you can go for the aci that is container instances so you can choose different uh, compute instances or compute services based on the requirement so first are you looking for a lift and shift migration or not if it is lift and shift then you have to decide whether it is a cloud optimized then you have to go for these type of services if it is not cloud optimized and just a lift and shift then you have to check whether it is a containerized application or a non containerized if it is non containerized then we have two options app service and vms if it is uh, a modern framework go for app service otherwise go for virtual machine means if it is a legacy application go for the virtual machine but in case of containerized you can check for the aks if you are looking for an orchestration service but if you don't want the orchestration go for app service for containers or you can go for a serverless container instance or the service fabric but if you are looking for a uh, new deployment not the migration then you can 
check for the virtual machine scale set means if you are if you need a full control over the infrastructure you are looking for an ias service that is that is the in uh, virtual machine scale set or if it is a high performance compute workload required then you can go for azure batch if it is microservices go for app services if it is a even driven even driven uh, background job applications then go for the functions so these are the different compute options we have and in that we are first looking the virtual machines so as i have mentioned this is primarily used for deploying your legacy applications on the cloud so you have some existing applications in your on premise environment but you want to deploy this legacy applications in your cloud environment so you cannot use app service or uh, container solutions for that because these applications are developed using some old frameworks or legacy frameworks which cannot be containerized or which cannot be uh, run in a pass environment such cases the better option is virtual machines and since it is an infrastructure as a service solution it will give you full control over this environment so you can decide which operating system to deploy which network configuration to be used what kind of storage configurations to be used the access control you can configure so which of the connections are allowed which of the connections not allowed all you can configure using virtual machine so if you are using virtual machines it gives full control over this environment and you can install and configure any applications and services inside that so if you go with the other pass services like uh, app services uh, or uh, container instances there are restrictions you cannot go and install custom applications or third party applications but if it is a vm you are allowed to deploy any applications so in your on premise data center you may be using a virtual machines using vmware or hyper v in the similar experience you will get in the cloud without purchasing any additional hardware so you don't need to pay for the hardware you just need to pay for the virtual machines compute how much cpu and ram you are using yeah, in the cloud that you have to pay only for that so this is one of the easiest way to migrate your application from on premise to the cloud so how the applications are running in on premise the exact same way you have to migrate them to the cloud so this is an easiest way to migrate because if you are migrating them to aks or app service you may need to refactor this applications you may need to make some changes inside the applications but here the when you use the vms applications and services can be migrated as it is to the cloud so whenever you create a virtual machine okay whenever you build new virtual machine you can decide are you uh, you you will get a full control over the environment and you can also uh, migrate these applications uh, uh, means the the on premise applications to the cloud and uh, even if you are using a containerized application okay or the applications that is non containerized behind the scene all of them uses virtual machines because if you go for app services azure functions aks all these services 
behind the scene they are using the virtual machines only so that means ultimately all these are running inside the virtual machine but if you need a full control over this compute environment then you have to go for the virtual machines otherwise you can go for app services or uh, functions or anything which is also using the virtual machines behind the scene but you will not get the full control over that while creating this virtual machines we have to configure lots of configuration settings starting with the virtual network because every virtual machine needs to run inside a virtual network so either you can explicitly create that virtual network or when you deploy the virtual machine it automatically creates a virtual network so it's your choice whether you want to create a custom virtual network and then deploy the vms inside it or use an ex, uh, uh, use a, a new network which is automatically created with the virtual machine and you can provide a valid name for your uh, virtual machines the name instead of giving simply the vm1 vm2 you can easily provide some names which is easy to recognize the role of that virtual machine for example if it is a virtual machine for web application deployment you can in in the uh, east us region then you can specify eus hyphen web hyphen 01 which means it is a east us web server vm and 01 will be the instance number okay suppose if you are creating a second vm we can give the name as eus hyphen web hyphen 02 like that so name is your wish you can provide any valid name but if you provide a name with the role uh, the the vm's role and the location and the instance count it will be easy to identify the virtual machines then you have to specify the vm location that means the region and one very important thing the compute which is available for creating this virtual machine uh, may be different in different regions for example if you are looking for a vm type it may be ds2 v3 or dvs uh, v4 so some vm type you are selecting it may not be available in another region okay so if you are looking for a specific type of virtual machine you have to first identify the locations which is supporting those vms so don't don't think that every location is providing similar type of vms and configurations and whenever you select a location also consider that you have to choose a location which is close to the customer so that the latency can be avoided then you have to select the vm storage means virtual machines disk configurations you can specify by default there will be an os disk suppose if you are creating a windows virtual machine there is a c drive which is considered as the os disk and then optionally there is a uh, temporary disk which is called a d drive will be there the d drive or temporary storage or temporary disk which does not persist the data so uh, for persisting the data you have to attach additional data disk so you can attach more than one data disk to a single vm and these storage disk can be managed or unmanaged so managed disk is now recommended which means you don't need to worry about the high availability and storage of these 
virtual machine disk. The Azure will take care of the storage and high availability of these virtual machines. Then the operating system, you can choose any Windows or Linux distributions for creating this virtual machines. And you have to keep the VM up to date. You can en enable the VM up updates. And you can also configure the monitoring for your virtual machines like uh, boot diagnostics, guest OS diagnostics, then uh, VM monitoring means the Azure monitor service can be enabled for the virtual machine so that once the deployment is done, you can monitor how the VM is performing. There are different uh, types of VM SKUs available, means types of virtual machine sizes available. Uh, for medium scale deployments, you, you can use the general purpose compute virtual machines. They have a balanced CPU and the memory ratio. So most of the uh, small scale and medium scale web and database deployments you can use the general purpose virtual machines. Storage optimized is mostly used for those virtual machines which require more storage capacity required. Okay, some terabytes of data storage is required, mostly for large scale database solutions. We need a storage, high volume of data storage is required. So you can Choose storage optimized for that. Compute optimized, if you want a higher compute to memory ratio, then you can go for the compute optimized, which gives more CPU compute for uh, compute optimized applications. GPU enabled uh, virtual machines available which is used for uh, graphical rendering, video editing, or maybe uh, uh, machine learning and AI solutions. Okay, so these purposes, we can use the GPU enabled compute. Memory optimized provides uh, more memory to CPU ratio. That means uh, more memory compared to the CPU ratio. This is more used for the in-memory databases and other applications that require in-memory storage, like in-memory caching, in-memory storages. So those cases, we can go for the memory optimized. And high performance compute or HPC is for large scale executions or batch processings, we can use the high performance compute virtual machines. So when to select virtual machine scale set? So what is this VM scale set or simply VMSS? Usually when you create an individual virtual machine or independent virtual machine, it cannot scale automatically. Usually when we deploy the application, so consider a web application. When the application's usage increases, we need to deploy more instances because one instance or one VM instance will not be able to handle all the requests. So for handling more requests, you may need to deploy more instances. But creating these new instances or creating this additional instances manually is a time consuming process. So we can use VM scale set, which can add or remove the virtual machines of same configurations by using a scaling condition. A scaling condition can be typically a CPU based a scaling condition. Like a, if the CPU utilization is going very high, it will automatically 
spin a new virtual machine. Suppose if the average utilization is again increased more than a particular threshold, then it creates an additional virtual machine. Means it creates new virtual machines whenever it requires or whenever it requires a new instance. Similarly, whenever the demand decreases, it removes those additionally created virtual machines. So you can create one or more virtual machines along with an application gateway or load balancer. Means load balancers can be an Azure load balancer or means uh, uh, network load balancer or maybe an application gateway, which is a layer seven load balancer. So you can manually create and configure these load balancers when you use a uh, virtual machines when vm scale sets we can automatically integrate these virtual machines these these uh, instances that comes inside the vm scale set uh, behind the load balancer so when you create the virtual machines you have to manually select the availability set or availability zone configurations. So for the high availability of virtual machines, you have to choose the availability set or availability zone configuration. So where to deploy that you have to explicitly choose. But in virtual machine scale set, it can automatically distribute this VMs into different availability zones. You can enable the monitoring services uh, for the virtual machines explicitly, but in auto scale, uh, in, in VM scale set, the auto scale based on the host metrics in the or in the guest metrics, uh, application insights or scheduled based scaling or scheduled based uh, uh, monitoring is configured in, in virtual machine scale set which means in VM scale sets, monitoring can be enabled by default for every virtual machine instances. So I'll show you a virtual machine creation. Suppose if I want to go and create a new virtual machine, I can choose a virtual machine service. I'm going to create a new resource group, something like a compute group. Here we can give the name of the virtual machine. I can select East US Web 01. And the location I can select, I'm selecting the East US. For high availability, you can choose availability zone. VM skill set or availability set. So I don't want to go with any or any of this. If, or if you want, you can select the availability zone. It's your wish whether to go for it or not. So in which zone you want to create, so you can select the zone. So create this VM in the zone one. And here the OS image type, I'm selecting the Windows Server 2022 data center azure edition and the vm size i'm selecting d2s v3 which is giving two cpu with 8 gb ram that's fine i can provide an administrator account See, I can also specify which of the port numbers to be open for connection. So I am selecting HTTP and RDP port numbers. So if 
you are deploying a web application, you have to open the port number 80 and 443. And for RDP connections, you can open 3389. It is also possible to use your existing licenses. If you have an existing Windows Server license, you can reuse these licenses in this VM and you can save up to 49% of the total cost. But we don't have an existing license, so I'm not going for the AHB, that is Azure Hybrid Benefit. In the storage configuration, that is disk configuration, I can specify what type of disk I want to use, premium or standard. So I'll go with normal standard SSD, which gives uh, better performance than the standard HDD. But premium SSD is more costlier, so I'm not going with that. And I can specify delete this disk when the VM is deleted. And this is by default encrypted with a, a Microsoft provided encryption key. And here you can add additional disk if you want. I don't want to attach any additional disk. Let it be. Networking, as you can see, it automatically creates a new virtual network here with this name. But if you want, you can explicitly create a new one. So I can give a custom name for this VNet. Maybe I can say my VNet. And you can provide an IP range here. And this subnet, I can say web subnet. So this will be the IP address range for my virtual network. And for my subnet, I'm using this. IP range. I want to use a public IP so that I can select public IP here. It will be automatically created and network security group for the protection of my virtual machine. It uses a basic one. And here I want to open the port number inside the NSG. So in NSG, I want to open port numbers 80 and uh, 3389 because the VM, I'm opening this port numbers, but in if the NSG, which is our uh, network security group, if it is blocking the connection of RDP and HTTP, then I will not be able to connect to the VM. So I want to open that connections in the inside the NSG. So rest of the things I can leave as it is. Under the management, I can configure some additional uh, settings like uh, do you want to enable the backup, automatic shutdown, site recovery, something like that. I don't want any of this. In the monitoring, we have to explicitly enable. So if I want to configure the alert configurations, I can choose alert with spe specific alert conditions like uh, if the CPU percentage is more than 80 or if the memory byte is less than 1 GB or some certain conditions, we can generate the alerts and send the alerts to this email ID or you can send them to custom uh, user roles. So I don't want alerts to be enabled, so I'll just disable this. You can enable boot diagnostics if you want. So that is by default enabled. Next. So here we can install some extensions like uh, Chef, Puppet, Backup Agent, File Security, or uh, uh, Internet Security, or uh, CACD Pipelines Agent. So some kind of extensions you can install. <coughs> using this or if you want to execute some custom script for example i want some powershell commands to be executed when the vm is created so after the vm is created i want to execute some powershell script for installing and configuring some softwares and services i can use custom script extension but currently we don't have anything so i'm just uh, 
closing this just a review and create but yes it is possible that you can add the tags so if you one you can add the tag so i am not adding the tags just creating this view So here you will be able to see the deployment progress. What are the resources created that you can see here? And what are the resources creating that also you can track here? In the notification bar, you will be able to see the progress. You can see the VNet is created and the vm is now creating and if i go to my resource groups you will be able to see the compute group is created inside this compute group it created the vnet the os disk the nic nsg public ip and this virtual machine so you can see all the resources available vm is still in the creation mode here yeah i think it is now completed here you can see the deployment is succeeded and you can see here vm is in the running state now if i want to connect to this using a public ip here is the public ip you can see or you can configure a DNS name for this. Click on this and configure a DNS name. So, for example, I can give something like a web01. So, this is not available. So, I'll say EUS web01. Yeah, so you can see EUS hyphen web01 dot EUS dot cloud app dot Azure dot com. So, that is the DNS name for this. Here, if I refresh, you'll be able to see the DNS name. So I can connect to this VM using this public IP or this DNS name. So here to connect to this, I can use the RDP. So let's connect and download this RDP file. See, I am able to connect to this virtual machine. You can see the virtual machine is loading. And here is the desktop. Here you can see the desktop of this VM. And if I want to install some service like IIS means web service, I can go to the server manager and then enable the IIS web server service.
okay so now let me add the roles and features Here is the web server. Install it. So once the installation is completed, here you can see, I think now the installation of that IAS is completed. I can go to the overview and using this public IP or this DNS name, I can access the web server there. So I'm using this DNS name. Okay, I think it is not yet installed. Yes, you can see now this web server is loading from the virtual machine which I have created on Azure. So I can use the public IP or the DNS name for accessing the applications running inside this VM. So you can create more than one virtual machines and put them behind the load balancer to ensure the high availability and the load distribution. Second compute service is the app service. So, so far we have seen how we can create a virtual machine by explicitly uh, selecting the virtual network selecting the operating system, selecting the storage and other configurations like uh, port configurations and other things. But if you are a developer, you may not be aware about all these configurations because a developer is mostly aware about the application frameworks uh, and solutions. They may not be aware about the network configurations or uh, disk configurations or operating system configurations. So what they need is a pre-configured service. A pre-configured service that allow you to deploy web applications is the app service. So here you can see if you want to deploy your web applications, background jobs, mobile backend services, or RESTful services or RESTful APIs, you can use the app service. So it's a completely web-based, that is HTTP-based web application service where you can deploy all kinds of web applications. You can choose any programming language for this app service. Means uh, if you see the VM which we have created is a uh, raw VM. It does not have any specific frameworks installed. So if I want to deploy a .NET application, I have to install and configure the .NET inside this VM. Or if I want to deploy a Java application, I have to install and configure Java inside this application, which means which type of application I want to deploy, that framework I have to manually install and configure. But when it comes to app service, when it comes to app service, it is coming with pre-configured environments. For example, here, when you create an app service, you are allowed to choose 
which runtime you want which means you which type of application you are planning to deploy so it is supports multiple languages and frameworks like a .NET, java python ruby node.js etc and you can also configure automatic scaling means you can configure automatic scaling conditions and based on that it will automatically add more instances like vms individual vms you don't need to go and create the additional instances and there is no load balancer explicitly required because it comes with a load balancer means it automatically provide high availability and the load distribution so, so whenever the uh, app service creates more instances it will run behind a load balancer and if one instance fails automatically the other instance start running or it will handle the request so high high availability is ensured for this pass service and it is also possible to enable ci cd deployments from github azure devops and other CICD tool. So using your favorite CI CD tools, you can enable deployments to the app services. See here when to go for this app service or what scenario. See here the question migrate or build new. If you are migrating and lift and shift, then can be containerized. If it is no, then you can go for a web API app. So you can say, so if you are planning to deploy a non-containerized web application, then you can go for the app service web app. Okay. But if you are looking for a containerized one, then you have to go for app service web app for containers. If it is migrating or build a new means if you are building a completely new environment, then you can check if you look if, are you looking for uh, a service which give you full control, then go for VM or if you are looking for HPC workload means high performance workload, go for Azure batch microservices deployment, then you can go for this means if you are looking for microservices typically we use kubernetes or maybe service fabric so if it is not a microservice it's a normal web application then you can go for which one app service so if it is microservices then you can go for a case or maybe a, a service fabric clusters So whenever you choose the app service web app, you have to first create an app service plan because the app service plan defines the cost and scaling features. So a plan is nothing but a uh, compute. For example, since this is going to be a pass service, uh, it would does not provide access to the underlying virtual machines. So behind the scene, it is creating a virtual machine only, but we don't have access to this virtual machine, which means whenever you create an app service plan, something like this. So this is your app service plan. It may be a standard plan. Standard S1. or maybe a premium plan, whatever you select. It uses a infrastructure or a compute here in the background. So here it is using the compute, which means it's a VM only. But this VM is managed by Azure. So we don't have access to this VM. So 
as a user we are creating this plan we are creating this plan we don't have access to this underlying vm and we we, we are allowed to deploy multiple web applications inside the same plan so this plan means it's a compute or it's a vm only but we don't have access to the vm directly and here we can deploy multiple web applications here this is my first web app but if you want you can deploy more than one web apps within the same plan so and every web application is accessible every web application is accessible using its own url see suppose if the first web application name i'm giving as abc then it will be something like a abc dot azure websites dot net which means this will be the default domain name for this so here abc will be the name of the application so abc dot azure website dot net which you can map with a custom domain later is your wish so when you go for the second web application maybe it's a name is x y x y z so it, it will be something like a x y z dot azure website dot net which means whenever you deploy a web application using app service web app it first requires an app service plan so this defines what is the compute capacity it provides so if you are selecting a standard s1 it provides 100 acu means azure compute unit with a uh, 3.3 1.75 gb ram and it supports auto scaling and other features so when you create a plan with a standard s1 it provides 100 acu with 1.75 gb ram inside it you will be you are allowed to deploy multiple web apps and each web apps has its own url through which the user is able to access this web app so if you go back here So use app services deployment slots for continuous deployment means whenever you deploy an app service web app, it uh, provides a deployment slot called a production slot. But it is possible to create some additional slots for staged deployments. Use the mobile apps to build a backend for iOS and Android apps means you can use the app service web app for uh, deploying your mobile's backend means ios or android applications backend service you can deploy inside the uh, app service web app use built-in authentication and authorization capabilities so usually the developer is responsible to configure the authentication and authorization for your web applications but without writing a single line of code you can configure uh, google authentication facebook authentication or microsoft or active directory authentication by using the app service no need to write uh, a line of code inside your application so 
build rest based web apps with the api means it supports not only the web applications but also mobile apps and the rest apis which means restful services you can deploy inside your app service and there is an option for executing some background jobs that is web jobs so web job is actually a part of your main application for example if you have a main web application you can deploy a web job so this is going to be a web job which is part of this application only and it is going to execute as a background task so maybe the main web application is uh, accepting some images but that images need to be compressed or maybe uh, uh, converted into grayscale using a background job application so image conversion is a background task which can be done by this web job okay or you are uploading a video the video file need to be converted into some other format that video conversion can be done by a background job which is part of the same web app okay so web job is actually a part of web app which is used for executing some background task within your web applications so i'll show you the demo of app service how it can be created it's very simple so if i go here i have to first create the app service plan because app service plan means we have to first create this app service plan so let me create this i'm selecting the same compute group here i can give the name as maybe test web plan and i'm selecting the windows os means the underlying virtual machines operating system will be windows location is to us pricing plan you can see there are different uh, options free shared basic standard premium etc i'll go with standard and then create see it's now start creating the app service plan which means it creates the vm in the background automatically after that we can deploy our web applications or we can create our web applications and deploy that web apps inside the plan here you can see the plan is created now if i am creating a web app you can see here is web app i can select the same compute group here web app 01 so i'm giving the name as web app so okay this name is already taken by somebody else okay i'll give I'm just adding some prefix. So BST Web App 01. That is the name of the web app. So the name full URL will be BST Web App 01 dot Azure Website dot net. And publish method is code. Runtime stack I'm selecting dot net. So you can see different languages and frameworks supported. 
operating system is Windows. The region is East US only, so that it automatically show the plan which is which I have created previously. So the test web plan is showing. So this web application will be created inside this plan. I'm selecting that. Next, if I want, I can enable the GitHub actions, which means CI CD deployment. I can enable, but I don't want to enable this. Networking, I don't want any extra configurations. Monitoring is enabled by default. Next, any custom tags like uh, environment, so not a production or owner name equal to. Now let me create. So I'm creating a web application on top of my app service plan. So that it will get a URL. Through this URL, I'll be able to access this web application. Let us see. It's still creating. OK, you can see the web app is created. And here you can see the tag is configured. And here is the default domain. That is URL of this. I can click on this and access this web application. See, this is the default page, but I can go and deploy my custom web application. Means if I have a dotnet application i can deploy my dotnet application inside this okay. because here i have selected the runtime stack as dotnet if i want to change to java i can do that by going into the configurations so currently my runtime is configured as dotnet i can go and change that to some other by going into the configurations general settings and from stack, I can change from .NET to Node.js or Python or some something else. OK, so I don't want to do any changes here. OK, so that's it about the app service web app so we will continue to the next one after the lunch break it's already 110 so we'll take a 50 minutes break so two o'clock we will continue the session and uh, we'll try to finish this module by that time So if you have any questions, you can post your questions in the chat window. So we can go to the break. We can go for the break. So two o'clock, we will be continuing the session. Is that fine? So all of you, please. Confirm in the chat window. OK, great. So let's go for the break now.
we have shared the uh, shared three learning uh, battle step for Z three zero five. Follow the step and redeem the packet.
have shared three uh, learning batches step for LZ305. Follow the step and redeem the batches. Thank you.
we have shared three learning batches set for AZ zero five. Please follow the steps and redeem the batches. Right, we have shared three learning batches for AZ C05. Please follow the steps and redeem the batches. Thank you. Awesome. We have shared three learning batches. Set for AZ C05. Please follow the steps and delete the batches. Thank you.
हेलो हेलो गाइस ऑल आर बैक ओके सो अदर्स प्लीज कंफर्म ओके okay so let's continue the session i hope the screen is visible to all of you yeah we were discussing about the at so 